Welcome to the Academy of Photography. Light travels faster than sound, that's why some people appear bright until they speak. I'm Christian Tudor and today I would like to go back to the basic and talk about aperture and depth of field. As a result of our, another online inquiry from Tobias from Canada, he's one of our subscribers and he's asking how can I explain the aperture and depth of field, how are they connected together? What's the real relationship? I'm going to provide a uh, physical optical explanation. It is addressed actually to people with a bit of understanding of physics and optics. As I have discovered, there are among our readers a lot of people technically savvy who can understand and appreciate technical information as well. Before getting deeper into the technical explanation I would like to point the previous tutorials that will support this video and if you haven't seen the previous basics of photography lessons I would point out the understanding of light in photography and also the depth of field tutorial. I'm gonna place the links down below so if you're interested in depth of field and aperture please feel free to uh, follow those links. Before moving on, let's remember a few basic things. Light is a combination between electromagnetic waves and photons, comes from a light source like the sun or a light bulb, bounces on an object back into, into the space. The camera or our own eyes will capture the bounce light which goes through the lens onto the sensor. Light changes direction when it changes the material it goes through, such air or water or glass in our case because lenses are made of glass and this is basically the refraction phenomenon and it applies to all transparent materials like water, petrol, diamonds and so on and so forth. The spherical shape of a lens can make all the photons converge to a single point. If the curvature of the lens is not a uh, perfect section of a sphere that means the light will not converge. Every lens is a combination of other lenses and they all act like one. When we're trying to achieve focus, we are setting up the camera. So what happens inside the lens is all the um, internal elements are moving in order to focus to a specific distance. So basically every time we focus, we have virtually a new lens. So when we are focusing the camera, there's one distance only. Basically the lens will converge all the light from that specific point to one single point onto the sensor. If this relationship is not right and the point of convergence is in front of, uh, of the sensor or beyond the sensor, for each one point of the image we have an area corresponding onto the sensor, not a point. This means we record a spot, not a point, for each point. Image is out of focus or blurry. For each lens setting there is one distance in front of the camera where we can achieve focus at one time. This is basically the focus plane. But in reality the lens is spherical, so we are not talking about the plane, we are talking about the focus sphere. Any point situated closer or further than this virtual sphere will not have single points corresponding on the sensor, but spots which are over one another and this is basically out of focus or blurry effect. Depending how far away are objects from this focus sphere, the blurriness or the out of focus effect is more accentuated or not. So if objects are reasonably close to the focus sphere, that means the uh, blurriness or out of focus effect is practically negligible and the human eye will not perceive the distance. That's why we can afford to say this sphere has a depth and we are talking about the, the depth of field concept. Everything within that that depth in front or behind the sphere of focus is reasonably sharp. Aperture as mentioned many times is basically a hole and is limiting the light cone in the relationship described which sometimes decreases the size of the area corresponding to a single point in the scene. So what we're saying that the, the aperture is going to limit the light cone coming from an object. That means, that means the spot on the sensor can be actually limited and made smaller. And as you can see in the drawings, it has the power to decrease the size of the area corresponding to a single point in the scene. Now, if that single, especially for those points which are not in the sphere focus, which are not in focus, the purpose of this is basically to bring more space into the acceptable depth of field, or let's just say making the focus sphere deeper. So we have a deeper depth of field. So more objects will appear in focus decreasing the blurriness overall. So this is the relationship between the aperture size and the depth of field. The smaller the hole, 
the shape of the image will be. Just to give you an example, if you do not have a perfect natural vision and you're wearing glasses, trying to look through the tiny little holes that you can do with your fingers and you will notice that your images are sharper, regardless of the type of glasses you're wearing normally. Of course, the image is going to be darker because you limit the amount of light getting into your eye or into the camera in our case. And this applies to the camera sensor as well, which limits the exposure level and requires longer times and that will complete the exposure triangle element the shutter speed but this is not what we're talking about today i hope this explanation is very clear and makes sense and it shows very simple how the depth of field and the aperture are inter interconnected and influencing each other and this is one of the good tools for you to understand the basics of exposure of course if you're a beginner if you have any questions please leave them down below do not forget to subscribe on the academy of photography website and this youtube channel give us a thumb up if you liked it and until I see you next time, I wish you happy shooting. Thank you very much.